The music of Michelle Lynn Johnson, better known as Michelle and Dege Ocello, reminds listeners that the spirits of Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and Jimi Hendrix still reside among the living. No doubt one of the most innovative artists of her generation, her work incorporates a wide variety of influences, including funk, soul, jazz, hip-hop, reggae, and rock. The Grammy winners received significant critical acclaim throughout her career, while also being credited for helping to spark the neo-soul movement. Born in Berlin, Germany, and raised in Washington, D.C., Michelle not only sings, but also raps and plays bass guitar. My origins are just a complicated childhood. Born to a father in the military, a mother with an eighth grade education who was a domestic, then add in all the American issues of racism and American schooling, and you have me. But my dad's a musician, so that was always around me. Her father played tenor sax in the U.S. Army Band, and he was transferred to the Washington area when Michelle was around three. He also played in the inaugurations for two presidents. Michelle says she got her love of jazz from him. Her other memories of her father, though, are not so pleasant notably his relationship with her mother. It was horrible watching the way my father treated my mother and not feeling I could help her. I've seen my father cheat on my mother several times in front of my face, and I wasn't strong enough to tell my mother that. Even though I knew she knew, I felt like I betrayed her by not telling her. With everything going on at home, it would have been nice to have school be a little bit of a refuge, but it wasn't. Michelle felt unattractive, especially after she cut off her hair at 16, and isolated because of her sexual orientation. Through her brother, she began learning about funk and other pop forms. Then she started writing songs and playing the bass. She even began performing with groups, boosting her confidence. After high school, she honed her skills on the DC go-go circuit in the late 80s and had a brief stint studying music history at Howard University before finally moving to New York to make her dreams of a career in music come true. She was also a mother herself by now, though she chooses not to talk about the father. Later, she adopted her surname, which she says means free like a bird in Swahili, or bird with a cello, as other translations claim. Then she auditioned at one point to become the bassist in rock band Living Color. She was unsuccessful, but she carried on sending out homemade demos, and before too long, she came to the attention of no less a personage than Madonna who signed Michelle to her Maverick Records label. Michelle was on her way, or so she thought. When she actually got in the studio, it was a totally different ballgame. Michelle felt so much self-imposed pressure that she went AWOL at one point for months, during the final stages of the recording process. At this time, she ended up addicted to crack. Everything happened so fast. I was playing a club, and within a week or two weeks, I was signed. Then I was in a studio working 18 hours a day. I thought I could handle it but I couldn't. She told the LA Times in 1996 that it was her love for her son, in large part, that gave her the strength to battle the addiction and return to her career. She's been clean ever since. Her debut album, Plantation Lullabies, would be released in October 1993. It received widespread acclaim from contemporary critics and included her first R&B hit, If That's Your Boyfriend, He Wasn't Last Night. It didn't make too much of a mark on the Billboard Hot 100, but it did make it into the top 20 on the R&B chart. The single also earned Michelle nominations for both Best R&B Song and Best Female R&B Vocal Performance at the 37th Grammy Awards. The following year, she experienced her biggest hit to date with John Mellencamp on a cover version of the Van Morrison song, Wild Night. The track rose all the way to number three on the Hot 100. Peace Beyond Passion, Michelle's sophomore album that came in 1996, would chart even better than her debut and feature a couple of hits on the dance chart. Over the next two decades, Michelle would work with everyone from Shaka Khan and Alanis Morissette to Basement Jacks and the Rolling Stones, as well as consistently release her own projects every few years, whether people realized it or not. In fact, in 2002, just before the release of her fourth album, Cookie, the Anthropological Mixtape, the Michigan Daily made note in an interview with the artist that her work rarely received play on MTV, BET, and VH1. They asked her if she was disappointed by this and if she would ever cater to them. Not really, it's cool. Those are just marketing tools. I'm an artist. I want to make art. I don't want to be a flash in the pan. It's not who I am. I just do what I do. It's really that simple. I can only hope for the best. People will find the record and have found it. I just try to be confident in those things. Another issue Michelle's battled throughout her music career is the focus on her sexuality. I feel like my sexuality preceded my music for a long time. It was used as a marketing tool in the beginning, pretty blatantly, 
and I didn't really get it at the time. I was just out. I didn't realize it was a selling point and it took a lot of years to get any sense of privacy back into my life, where people didn't feel entitled to talk to me about who I was having sex with, as if it weren't a personal question. She told the Boombox in 2014 she refuses to identify herself as being hetero or homosexual. Michelle's music has been featured in a number of film soundtracks, including How Stella Got Her Groove Back, Love Jones, Love and Basketball, The Best Man, Higher Learning, and Down in the Delta. In 2016, she provided the theme song as well as various other soundtracks for the Oprah Winfrey Network acclaimed series, Queen Sugar. Michelle's last studio album, a project of covers titled Ventriloquism, was released in 2018 and pays tribute to some of the songs and artists who've influenced her. Today, Michelle is married to a woman and has two children. She continues to perform and can currently be seen on a U.S. cross-country tour with indie rock singer-songwriter Andrew Bird and indie folk singer Iron and Wine. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.